Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of the tic-tac-toe tutorial. So last time we prepared our layout, now let's write some actual game code. And I just want to mention that this is my approach of doing this, but it's certainly not perfect. So if you find any mistakes or room for improvement, you are very welcome to write a comment and discuss this. As usual, I will put a link to the source code into the description box, and small mistakes will basically break the whole game code, so if you do this tutorial, and something isn't working, I highly encourage you to take a look at the actual code, piece by piece. Ok, now let's switch over to our main activity java file. At the top of our main activity, we are going to create some member variables. The first one is a private button, but it's a two-dimensional array. So we write two pairs of those square brackets. We call it buttons and set it to a new button array. Semicolon. And into those square bracket pairs we write 3 and 3 here as well. So as I showed you last time, this is basically how our two-dimensional array will look and it has the same shape as our playing field. So we have this 3 times 3 playing field here. And we are going to save references to our buttons in this two-dimensional array here. Don't worry, it's actually not as confusing as it sounds. So let's continue. Now we create a private boolean, we call it player1 turn and set it to true. So as soon as we start the game, player1, which is the player with the x, will start. Next is private int round count semicolon and as the name implies this will count our rounds. So if there have been 9 rounds and we have no winner, we know that we have a draw because we only have 9 fields. Next we have private int player1 points, I think this is self-explaining, and private int player2 points, semicolon. And lastly, private text view, text view player1, which will display the points of player1, and of course private text view, text view player2. And that's it for our member variables. Let's now go over into our onCreate method. First we are going to get references to our text view. So we write text view player1 equals find view by id r.id.textView p1 was the id we gave it. The same for our text view player2 r.id.textView p2. And now we will assign our button array with references to our buttons. But instead of doing this one by one, we will put this in a nested loop. So we write for parentheses int i equals 0, semicolon, i is smaller than 3, so we want to go 3 rounds, semicolon, i++, plus plus. so we increment i with each round. In this for loop we put another for loop, for int we call this j this time, equals 0, semicolon, j is smaller than 3, and j++, plus plus. and in here we assign our buttons. So with this nested loop, we will loop through all our rows and columns in our two-dimensional button array. And if you remember the last time we gave those buttons, these IDs here, which already have their position in the two-dimensional array as the number. So we have this 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on. And the reason we gave them those names is so that we can get all those IDs dynamically in our nested loop. So we will create a string, we call it button idea equals and then we write a string in quotation marks button underscore which is the first part of the id of each button and now we want to append the row and the column so we write plus i plus j semicolon. So this will start at button underscore zero zero, go to button underscore zero one, zero two, one zero one one and so on. So we will loop through all our button IDs we created. And below we continue to build the actual resource ID with this string. int res ID, because resource IDs are integers, equals get resources, this one here, dot get identifier. Here we pass our button ID string we create, comma, here we write ID in quotation marks, comma, get package name, semicolon. 
And this is the resource ID we have to pass to find view by ID. So usually we write r.id. Dot and then we pass the name of our button. But in this case, we will create it dynamically with this nested loop here. So we take our two dimensional buttons variable like this. And in the first pair of square brackets, we write i and in the second one j. So this will always fit perfectly to our button ID here. So 0, 0 and 0, 0 here as well, 0, 1, 0, 1 and so on. And then we set this to find view by ID and pass our res ID int we just created. And this way we will get references to all our buttons without having to assign them one by one. And we will also use this to set on click listeners on all those buttons the same way. So we write buttons i j in square brackets dot set on click listener and here we pass this. So we pass our main activity as the on click listener. This of course also means that we have to implement this interface to our activity. So we go up here behind app commit activity implements on click listener the first one here android.view.view and of course we also have to implement the on click method so we click on this line click on this red little light bulb here implement methods and we keep our on click method here selected and press ok and now at the bottom we have our on click method which will be called when we click any of our nine buttons but we are not done yet in our on create method so we go outside of our nested loop here and assign our reset button. Button, button reset equals find view by id, r.id dot, button reset, this one here, semicolon. And we also set an on click listener for this. Button reset dot set on click listener, but here we don't pass this, we pass new on click listener. So we will handle our button click on the reset button in this anonymous inner class here. But we take care of this later. Now let's go into our onClick method for our playing field buttons. So the view v here we get passed is our button. So the first thing we do in this method is checking if, and in here we first have to cast our v variable into a button. So we make another two pair of parentheses. So we have six parentheses in total. And in the most middle one we write button. We go outside of the first pair, space v, outside of the next pair, and here we write dot get text dot to a string dot equals and here we write quotation marks and we keep them like this. We don't put anything in here and we don't put a space in here. And now between the first two opening parentheses here, we write an exclamation mark. So what this does is it checks if this button that was clicked contains an empty string. And if this is not the case, it means that it was already used before. There is already an X or an O on this field. So we write curly braces. And if this is the case, if this button does not equal to an empty string, we simply write return. So we leave this method right here and don't do anything at all. Now outside of this if clause here, we continue with our method. If this contains an empty string, then we want to do the following. We want to check if player one turn curly braces. This checks if player one turn is true. So if it's the turn of player one right now, then we cast our V into a button again with these two pairs of parentheses, button outside of this V dot Z text this time, and we set it to X and else, which means it's player two's turn. We do the same, but in this case, we set our text to Oh, okay, this will take care of changing the text of the button. Now we go below this whole if part here and continue with our method. The next thing we want to do after someone made its turn, we want to increment round count. So we know that one more round is over. Next, we have to check if someone has won yet. For this, we will create another method. We do this below our onClick method here. We call it private boolean and we call it check for win. So this method will return either true or false if someone has won or not. And here we have to go through all our rows and columns and diagonals and check if someone has won. For this we will save the text of our buttons in a two-dimensional string array which basically has the same shape as our buttons array. We call it string 
field equals new string array and here we write 3, 3, the same as we did for our button array. Now we want to get all those button tags into the string array and we do this with a nested loop again. The same loop we had at the top. 4 and i equals 0, semicolon, i is smaller than 3, semicolon, i++, plus plus, curly braces and here our j loop, 4 and j equals 0, j is smaller than 3, j++, plus plus, curly braces. Here we want to take our field variable at i j and set it to buttons i j so the button at the same position dot get text dot to string so we go through all our buttons and save them in the string array okay outside of this nested loop we use a string array to go through all our rows and columns and we do this the following way for int i equals zero i is smaller than three i plus plus and in here we don't put another for loop we just go through our columns with if field at position i and zero like this dot equals and here we write field at position i one so we compare this to the field next to it we are not done with this if part yet. In the next line, we continue with two ampersand signs, which means end. Field, we take the same as our first one here. At position i, zero, dot equals. And now we compare it to field i, two. So we compare it with the one next to it and the one after that. But we are not done yet, we continue to ampersand signs again, exclamation mark, field, we take the first one again, position i0, dot equals, and then we pass an empty string here again. Now we go outside of this and write a pair of curly braces and can define what you want to do in this case. Now this is responsible for comparing the three fields next to each other. And this part here is responsible to make sure that it's not just three times an empty field, because if it's three times an empty field, we don't have a winner yet. And in here we simply return true. So whatever calls this method here gets returned true and knows that there is a winner. Now let's just copy this whole for loop here and paste it one more time below and make some little changes so we go through our rows instead of our columns. We change this from i0 to 0i. We change this from i1 to 1i. 0i to i. So we basically just swap those fields here. 0i. And that's it. So now we have taken care of our rows and columns and below the second for loop we check for our diagonals. For this we copy this if part here, not the whole for loop but just the if part. And now we change this to 0011, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 2, and 0, 0. So this basically goes through this diagonal here from the top left to the bottom right. And now this one here is left. So let's copy this if statement here once again and change this to 0, 2. We keep 1, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, and 0, 2. I know that this can be confusing, but just look at the actual code and look how the two-dimensional array looks and you will definitely understand it. So when we take a look at this, we can see how this works. So we start at 0, 0, compare it to 0, 1. Then we compare our 0, 0 to 0, 2. And because of those ampersand signs here, both have to be true in order for our if part to be true. And also our first field must not be an empty string. So all of those three buttons here have to be either O or X. 
So the next round, our i is set to 1. So we compare 1, 0, which is this one here, to 1, 1, which is this one. And then we compare 1, 0 to 1, 2. And in the third round of our for loop, we go through the bottom row here. So this first loop checks this, this, this. The second one checks this, this, this. And those two take care of our diagonals. So those are the cases when anyone has won this game. We don't know yet who has won, but we know that someone has won, if any of those is true. If this is not the case, we still have to return something, but in this case, of course, we will turn false. So if none of this is the case, we know that we don't have a winner and our check for win method will return false. So now let's go up again into our onClick method here. After we incremented our round count, we check if check for win, and this is the method we just created. If this is true, curly braces, then we check if player one turn, curly braces, then player one wins. And if this is the case, we will create a method player one wins. We don't have this method yet, but we will create it later. If this is not the case, else, if it's player two's turn, then we call player two wins. So we check if player one or two wins, but it can also be a draw if all fields are full. And this is why we check for this round count here. So at the end of this outer if statement here, we write else if, in here we write round count is equal to, with two equal signs, nine. So if nine rounds are over, we know that we have a draw. And in here we will call draw, which we have to create as well. And there's one more case. Below this we write else. If there is no winner and no draw, we want to uh, switch turns. So player one turn is equal to exclamation mark player one turn. And this will always set player one turn to its opposite. So if this is true, this will be set to false. If it's false, it will be set to true. So we basically switch turns. Now we go below our check for win method here and we create these three methods we just called private void player one wins below this private void player two wins and private void draw and we will take care of these methods in the next video make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet